This video is about how to support your child to learn number bonds. Number bonds are pairs of numbers which add up to a specific number. They're very important to your child developing fluency in maths. The early learning goal states that children should have automatic recall of number bonds to 5, including subtraction facts, and some number bonds to 10, including doubles facts. That means they need to know the number bonds of numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, and some beyond that. For instance, they know the number bonds of 6 and 10. I'll deal with doubles in a separate video. I'm going to show you five different methods of learning number bonds. These will involve you having some plates or paper, some small objects that you can count, a cup or small pot, and double-sided counters that you can buy cheaply or you can make your own. I'll also show you a method of using Numicon. It's not essential that you buy Numicon, but if you want to make the investment, it's definitely worthwhile. And don't worry, it comes in smaller sizes than this. Numicon's not just for children in reception, it's used throughout the school. Anyway, let's get started. This is a good way of getting started with number bonds with your child. You just get three plates or you can draw three circles on a piece of paper. Choose the number bond that you're working on. In this case, it's four. And this is a part, part, whole model. And we want you to encourage your child to use this language. And what they can do, they can work systematically. So in this case, any small objects, as long as they've got four, will do. And they can start over here. How many have you got on this side? And how many have you got on this side? Can you tell me that in a sentence? Part is four, part is zero, and the whole is four. If they move one across, can you tell me a sentence about that? Part is three, part is one, and the whole is four. Part is two, part is two, the whole is Four. Part is one, part is three, the whole is four. Part is zero, part is four, the whole is four. Numicon is a great resource for number bonds as well as for many other things. This is a box of 80. You don't actually need the box of 80 to do number bonds. As long as you've got two of each Numicon, then you'll be fine for this. So if your child was working on number bonds of six, you could just get them to find different ways of making six using only two numbers. So they start with a numicon of six, and six plus what makes six? Do you need any more? One, two, three, four, five, six. So six plus zero makes six. Or you could say part is six, part is zero, and the whole is six. Try, just try different ways. Five plus what? They can probably tell you instantly just looking at the gap that's left there. Five plus one, but they can check it like that. Okay, you've done five plus one, you can find a different way. Three plus what? One, two, three. So they could say three plus three makes six. They could say part is three part is three, the whole is six, or, oh look, they're the same number, it's a double, double three is six. And you can also get them to work systematically, so they could, could start with six plus zero, one plus five, what's one more than one? Two, so start with two, two plus what? Four, and so on. Every child in reception gets given a laminated tens frame. You can cut this up if you want to and turn it into two five frames. 
or you can mask one area off and uh, if you cut it up you can just tape it back together again when you want to use it as a tens frame. I'm going to use a fives frame because I'm going to be doing number one to five with this one. You will need some double-sided objects. Now you can buy double-sided counters from eBay or Amazon. A pack of 20 of these is about three pounds to buy. Or you can, if you want to, get a 1p coin and a 5p coin and tape them together with sellotape. That works at about 60p if you want 10. I'm going to use the uh, blue and red ones. Doesn't really matter which ones you buy. So what you can do is get your child to work systematically to find different ways of making 10. So you get them to start with say one color, red, okay. They can put all the red ones down. And encourage them to say a number sentence about it because we want to develop their mathematical language which helps their understanding. So how many red ones have we got? We could say part is five. How many blue ones? Part is zero and the whole is five. Turn it over. Part is four, part is one, the whole is five. Part is three, part is two, the whole is five. And if your child's been practicing subitizing, they'll start to recognize these groupings really easily. Part is two, part is three, the whole is five. Part is one, part is four, the whole is five. Part is zero, part is five, and the whole is five. You could also get your child to record it. As well as using objects, which is really important in helping children to understand maths. We don't want them starting off writing sentences. We want them understanding what they're doing. So they could record it using uh, pens. I've got some pre-printed ones. Okay, so we've got five plus zero makes five. I guess I could write that as a number sentence. Record it as four blue and one red. How could I say that? Well, part is four, part is one, the whole is five, or four plus one equals five, or four add one is five. Three plus two. good to get your child to develop a method of working systematically as we're doing here. Two plus three equals five. One plus four equals five. Zero plus five is five or equals five or part is zero, part is five, the whole is five. find all the different ways of making five. You can make it a bit more fun. You can put all the counters in a pot, shake them up, put them out. How many did I get? How many blue ones? Can you tell me a number sentence about that? Part is four, part is one, the whole is five. Let's do it again. Part is three, part is two, the whole is five. Songs are a good way of helping your child to remember number bonds. 
Jack Hartman's Kids Music Channel has songs for all the number of bonds up to 10. I put a link to the channel in the memo section of Tapestry. For the number bonds of numbers up to five, I encourage children to join in, but also to use the fingers on both hands to help them to remember the number bonds. You could do this with them. I'll give you an example. Jack Hartman! Kids Music Channel! Number bonds, number bonds, that make five. I know my number bonds, they help my math stay strong. Two parts make a whole, let's move and sing along. Right arm up for the one part, left arm up for the other part, both arms up for the whole. Let's go! Zero plus five makes five. One plus four makes five. Two plus three makes five. Three plus two makes five. Four plus one makes five. Five plus zero makes five. Those are the number bonds, number bonds that make five. Zero plus five makes five. One plus four makes five. Two plus three makes five. Three plus two makes five. Four plus one makes five. Five plus zero makes five. Those are the number bonds, number bonds that make five. I know my number bonds, they help my math stay strong. Two parts make a whole, let's move and sing along. Number bonds, number bonds, number bonds. So far you've been teaching your child about number bonds using plates or circles drawn on paper, five or tens frames, numicon, if you have that, and number bond songs. What we need to do is make sure that your child has automatic recall of the number bonds. So if I said three add what makes five, they would say two, or six add what makes 10, they would say four, instantly like that. This takes a lot of practice. Now this is a game that children really enjoy, which tests and develops their fluency in a particular number bond. It also helps to develop their understanding that subtraction is the inverse of addition, so that knowledge of the number of bonds of, say, 5 can help them to solve a problem such as 5 take away 3 is 2. You will need a pot or a cup and some small objects which can be counted. You may also need a 5 or 10s frame and some Numicon if you have that to help support your child. So imagine we're doing the number bonds of four. For this, you'll need some objects, small objects and a pot. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna say we're learning about number bonds of four, I'm gonna put one, two, three, four beads in the pot. I've only got four. And I'm gonna give you some, I'm gonna give you two. How many have got left? If your child doesn't know, then you can say two plus what makes four to help them. If that doesn't help, you can say, okay, well, show me four fingers, take away two fingers, how many you've got left? Two. Two plus two makes four. Let's see. Two plus two makes four, or part is two, part is two, the whole is four. Do it again, put four in, I'm gonna give you three. How many got left? And you can say as a number sentence, addition sentence, three plus what makes four? Hopefully they'll remember one. If they're finding it difficult, what you can do is use your five frame if you're doing up to five or tens frame if you're doing up to 10, or you can just use the tens frame. And uh, I just show them First, so I put them out, one, 
two, three, four. If your child is using these five or ten frames a lot, they'll remember that the position of four on the five frame is up to here. Okay, so we've got four, we're going to put them in the pot, and I'm going to give you one. How many have got left? They could put the one on the five frame, and it helps them to visualize it. Three. Let's see if you're right. One plus three makes four, or part is one, three, or part is one, part is three, and the whole is four. Another way you, another way you can do it is using Numicon. So you can say I've got four, I'm going to give you three. How many have got left? And they, your child can just place the beads on the pneumocon and they can visually see they've got one left. Can you say in another sentence, part is three, part is one, the whole is four, or three plus one makes four. If you were going to be doing it with the seven, you'd be wanting a tenth frame and seven objects. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And again, they can count them out on here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, I'm going to put those seven in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got seven in here. I'm going to give you five. How many have we got left? Five plus what makes seven? And they can put them on here to visualize it. And the more they're practicing their subitizing, and the more they practice there with using the five or tens frame, then they'll remember seven. We've got five here and two here. Oh, okay. So there were two left in the pot. Or you can use the pneumocon. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven in here. I'm going to give you three. So I had seven, I've taken away three. How many have I got left? So you're using language of subtraction this time. And you can show them the inverse. You can say three plus what makes seven? And put them on here. One, two, three. And they can see that they've got space for four left. They say four. Okay, can you tell me that in a number sentence? Three plus four equals seven, or part is three, part is four, and the whole is seven. So we have come to the end of the video. I hope you found it useful. Most children find memorizing the number of ones difficult. It takes time, but if you get ch your child to practice regularly, they will memorize them. I usually start with them working on the number of bonds of five as they've got five fingers on each hand and that can help them to work out the number of bonds if they're struggling. I then work on the other number of bonds up to five and then number of bonds beyond five. Don't just use one method, I would use a variety of methods that I've shown you. There are also some games that your child can play on a phone or computer that will help and I will put a link to those in the description of this video or in the memo section on Tapestry. Thank you for your time.